Hello people, this is Barrett, and after the success of one of my latest videos, the best indicator for Pokemon investing, I've decided to keep the streak going and use the same indicator for nothing less than Puldia Evolved. So before we get into the data, a quick overlook on the set itself. So Puldia Evolved is the second set of the Scarlet and Violet era, and it came out on June 9th of 2023. So at this point, it is roughly eight months old. And obviously the most remarkable cards within the set are the SIR Ariano, which got a reprint in the newer Proteum Fates set, as well as Illustration Rail, Mojcarp, and then the introduction of Chimpao and GUEX. Now, in addition to that, as you can see here, this set has A1 Commons, 70 Uncommons, 36 Illustration Rares, 26 Ultra Rares, 25 Rares, 17 Double Rare, 15 Illustration Rares, and 9 Hyper Rares. So that being said, let's dive into the data. Okay, so here we have the spreadsheet. I just considered everything that is a Double Rare or higher. And this main part, if you're familiar, if you watch a previous video, and if you haven't, obviously, I would recommend you, you do so. You can just skip to the latter half of the video. So in here, I basically just do what almost, what a ton of PokeTubers already do. I just take the cards, I list them down, and then I take market price. So this is a card, this is market price, everything is in US dollars. And these prices for reference are taken off TCG players. Again, market price today is February the 18th, US dollars based on TCG players. So a ton of people do that. The interesting part I do recommend you guys watch is towards the second half of the video where we did start to make stronger assumptions and we see how the price of a single pack evolves. So again, Ultra Rare, Iono and the bosses are the most expensive. And then we have the Hyper Rare with the Super Rod. These are all, I would call them gold cards. Forgive me the terminology, but they're gold. So I would just call them gold cards. And these are the cards that have the toughest pull rate in general. It's roughly one hyper rare out of 57 packs. And then last but not least, the card set I'm sure you guys like the most, illustration rares and special illustration rares. Again, we have 36 illustration rares, the Marge Carp and the Raichu and the Tyrander be my favorite as well as unarguably by the prize, everyone's favorite. And then we have the Iono Shimpao GU being the most expensive special illustration rares. Now, as you probably noticed here on the bottom of every rarity, I wrote down something which is mainly for myself because I wanted to say it, but I, I know myself, I tend to forget stuff. So as you can see here, we're assuming all cards of this series have the same probability of being pulled. Now, what does that mean? It means that the chance of pulling Chimpao is the same of pulling a Muscarada or a Bellbolt. So they all have the same probability of being pulled. And the same goes, and again, these are assumptions that we're making. If you open a ton of packs, and by a ton, I mean not basically a number of packs that no one can really open at once, these should apply unless the Pokemon company purposely short printed a few cards. So if the Pokemon company didn't intentionally short print anything, then this assumption should hold true for enormously large amount of packs. So again, the assumption is that every card, every rarity is as the same probability and by, by same probability, I mean, hyper rares, all hyper rares, again, as I mentioned previously, the pull rate is one out of 57 packs. So all of these have the same probability of being pulled, all of these as same probability, so on and so forth. So that means that let's get into the fun part. So here is what I call the row cards data. Why did I call it that? Well, again, if you watched a previous video, you should already know, but if not, then you can already guess by looking at this row right here. What we're going to do and what I like to do, which again, I haven't read, seen anyone doing it yet, and uh, hopefully you guys appreciate it. As always, let me know in the comments if you like this kind of videos. If so, then I know that 
I'll be making more on different sets and uh, then I'll explore different things as well. But as always, please let me, guys let me know in the comment section if you guys enjoy this content. So here simply the pull rate data are taken off TCG Infinity and they seem to be reliable. They give you a, what is called a confidence interval. So again, as always, these are estimate. Everything is, is an estimate, it's not precise, but it, it's, it is pretty accurate for what, at least what we need to do with it. So double rare and pull rate for 14%. So it means that opening a pack, you have 14% probability of pulling a double rare. And these are the pull ratio, one out of seven packs. Same goes for ultra rare, one out of 15. Hyper rare, as I said, one out of 57. Illustration rares, one out of 13. And special illustration rare, one out of 32. Again, hyper rare being the toughest to pull, but obviously it's a whole different story when you say, okay, the illustration rare, you have a 7% probability of pulling one out of a pack, but what if you want to pull all of them? Well, that's a whole different story, which press will take for another video. Now, average rarity value, what does it mean? You simply take the mean of all these cards, and that's why this assumption is, I, I, I pointed it out, because we're making the assumption that all these, again, I, I'll say it to oblivion, they have the same probability of being pulled. So you take the mean, the average value, the expected value of every rarity, and then you multiply for the probability of being pulled, and that's, you get the expected value of a rarity in a pack. What does it mean? Well, this 13 cents, for instance, means that out of a single pack, we're expecting, on average, we should get 13 cents coming from a double rare. Out of a pack, we should get, on average, 23 cents of value coming from an ultra rare, and so on and so forth. Well, that's the booster pack expected value. If you want to be more precise, we should say this is the booster pack expected value of a rarity that is double rare or higher, and that comes down to $1.51. Now, again, a lot of people do this. A lot of people done that as soon as the set came out. Well, Barrett, you haven't really done anything new. Well, you're right. That's why we do take into consideration PSA graded cards. Now, I'm sure many of you, as soon as they read PSA, they already saw you think, oh, well, but how do you know what grade you're gonna get? Well, you can't assume this stuff, so on and so forth. And I'll say you're right. That's why, again, I do have another disclaimer. We're making furthermore assumptions. Where are we assuming? Well, we're assuming, and please follow me here. It is very important. We're assuming that we're pulling a card, pack fresh, the pack wasn't damaged, the box wasn't damaged, the sealed product from which we pulled the card wasn't damaged, and by making that assumption, we're assuming that the quality of the printing is either a PSA 9 or PSA 10 quality. And not only that we're assuming, we're also assuming that we're gonna send it no matter what. So we, so after making the assumption that the quality is gonna be either a nine or a 10, we're gonna send it to a PSA no matter what. So if we see that the card off center, we're gonna send it either way. And in order for these values to work, and I said it here, we are assuming that other people have done the same. Now, that's a very strong assumption. And if you lost me there, I'll say it again. What I'm saying is, I'll try to put in, in the simplest terms as possible. We open a pack, we pull a Magikarp, I'll, I'll take the Magikarp for example, pull the Magikarp, and then the pack wasn't damaged, it was a nice sealed pack, and we're assuming that a freshly pulled card is gonna get either a nine or a 10. So we're not gonna look at the card, we're gonna send it to PSA, and we know that we should get, on average, a nine or a 10. And not only we're assuming that, but we're assuming that every other people has done the same, which is obviously a strong assumption. I know it, I'll say it, and that's why I'm saying it. Why are we assuming that? Well, if we want to take these numbers, this PSA graded reports, these are PSA graded reports, into consideration, then there's really no point, and please 
this is very important. I see many people on YouTube talking about this, but really, in my opinion, it doesn't really make a much sense what they're saying. And here's why. So when they say, oh, well, you have a PSA 10. Well, you know that if you're going to send it to PSA, let's say they take the ratio of these two, they don't consider eight, seven and six, which is what we did. Well, then you have a probability of roughly this would be 27 percent. So this divided by this plus this 27 percent roughly. So you're going to send it. And on average, 27% of the time, you're going to get a PSA 10. Well, that, that, that's really not how it works. Because if you make that assumption, and again, I'm sorry if I'm stressing this a lot, but this is very important for the sake of this video. When you make that assumption, you're assuming that other people have done, have done the same. You're saying all the people that sent it to grading, they didn't care, and they just sent it off to grading. Now, hope I haven't lost you there and hope you're following me because I think this is very important and I think many people don't really think about it or at least the people I've seen on YouTube don't think about it. What I'm saying is we do not know if these 408 cards came from people that looked at the card and were like, well, this has a big probability of getting a PSA 10. It's very well centered. It doesn't have any scratches, no whitening. It's perfect. I'm going to send it and I know because of objective facts that this has a very large probability of getting a 10 or else these 408 cards come from people that were, were like, well, I just pulled it, maybe it gets a 10, maybe not. I don't know, but I just pulled it, maybe it has a chance. Well, these are two different assumptions that we cannot make for certain and that's why, again, I've I know I probably spent seven, eight minutes on this. This is why we're assuming what we are. Again, if something's not clear, as always, happy to explain it further in the comment section. Now, that being said, hope I haven't lost half of the viewers by now. And for those who are still watching, thanks a lot. Always appreciate it. I wouldn't be here without you. So moving on, I just took PSA sold items based on eBay auctions. And I just run them up to the closest smaller number. So PSA 9s basically go for raw price. And then PSA 10, and as you can see here, I just taken the main hits, go for quite the premium. Now, let's take the turnaround for instance. PSA 9, which is roughly also, again, raw price, goes for $20. PSA 10 goes for $150. Now, what's very interesting is the pop report. Now, this set is almost a year old. There's only 132 PSA 10. Now, if you see, this trend basically goes for every car. Obviously, the Ono is the most graded car, both in special restriction rare as well as ultra rare. And the Modge Carp is the second most graded card. But if you look even in the Raichu, the Raichu restriction rare only has 86 PSA 10s. Now, my question is, why are is the pop report so low? Do people just not want to grade $20 cards? Do people see that the print quality is very bad, which I heard, I know it is seems to be worse than Sword and Shield. I just, I think this is a very interesting question that it's kind of hard to know the answer of, but I think it's a question that we should address. Why is the poor so low? At least it's lower compared to what we've seen in the Sword and Shield era. Could it be that people haven't opened as much product as they used to? Could it be that actually pulling a specific illustration rare, having 36 of them in this set, is actually quite tough, so there's not really many out there? Just throwing out questions that um, the answer of should give you the answer to the main question, why is the pop so low? But really, how can we know the answer? So that being said, here, the expected value after grading. So what's this? So again, we're just making the assumption that we don't consider PSA 8 or lower because we're assuming that out of a freshly pulled card, it's going to get a 9 or 10. We went over this. So this value here, as you can see, is the value of a 9 multiplied by the probability of getting a 9. So it would be this number over this number plus this number. So that's probably getting a nine 
times probability, oh sorry, the value of a nine, and you do the same if you were a 10, then you add the value of a 10 and probability of getting a 10. You get the expected value of the gradient and you get all these pretty cute numbers. Now, I know this is what you're interested in. So this is what you've been waiting for. What is the expected value of pack after we take gradient into consideration? So without wasting too much time, this is a percentage to change compared to uh, cards. So here, we didn't consider double rare, so there's no change. Ultra rare, we have a 6% gain. Illustration rares, 40% gain. And SIR, 70% gain. So one thing I forgot to mention, and it's a good thing to remember, is that I did take into consideration the grading card cost. So as you can submit cards to PSA for $15, that's the lower tier, I didn't take into consideration the $15 fee. So when I went on to calculating the average relative value of a card, which again is a mean, as you can see here, I do have a value of Iono. This is the graded value. And you can see here on the formula, I did subtract 15, which is again, the graded cost. Same for the mod card, as you can see here, right here. So I did take into consideration grading cost. Now, what I didn't take into consideration is selling fee, which I didn't because you could also sell it privately, private sale, and it just makes the model really a bit more complicated. Um, and it doesn't really focus on what I wanted you to focus the most. Now, feed automobile mention are the jet energy on common, ion on common, and super rod commons. So these cards that are easily available do have some value. So I don't really have the pull rate for the specific card which is why I didn't add them into the model. But this card goes for, as you can see here, between $1.5 to $2.5, depending if you want the regular version or the hull reverse. So they do have some value and you might pull a lot of them. Now, as you can see here, now our newer booster pack expected value is $1.83, with a percentage change of 21% compared to the raw cards booster pack expected value. Now, I will not draw any conclusions. I just wanted to give you the data. Hope you guys appreciate the work. Now I did this because if you're new to the channel, obviously welcome. We are doing a pull the evolved box break. Now, luckily, thanks for all of you who are participating. We sold out all the packs. All the packs are sold. This is going to happen most likely March 2nd. It's a Saturday and I was selling the packs at two euros each. And as you can see, if you take into consideration credit card value, it was a pretty fair value. We were close to what mathematically, statistically, should be the expected value of pack, which is why, again, thank all of you who are joining, thank all of you who bought packs, and I'll be thanking also all of you who, who will join the live and support the channel. Again, most likely it's going to be Saturday 2nd, we're doing it. Now, luckily, this is going to be the first box break, and hopefully it will not be the last. So stay tuned, especially if you're Europeans, as we like to focus on the European market here on the channel, there'll be more coming. So as always, I do recommend to join the Discord if you want to stay updated, you find the link in the description of this video as well, completely free, of course. So thank you for watching. As always, let me know in the comments if something wasn't clear, if you think I forgot something, if you think I should add something else, and if you like this format so that I can make more videos and you guys can enjoy even more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.